So is it true that vaping is much less harmful than smoking regular cigarettes? It's just water vapor, right? I mean, it's not like it's smoke, so it doesn't do anything to me. Well, actually, that's not quite the case, especially since what's being inhaled isn't water vapor, but an aerosol. Pretty much like the white smoke they have at concerts, which is actually made from glycerol and propylene glycol. So, are we actually vaping concert smoke? Yes. Without any of the flavors and the nicotine, it'd essentially be the same deal. So today, folks, we want to shed some light on vapes, also known as e-cigarettes, by talking about what's really in those liquids they contain and how they affect your health. Ciao ragazzi, this video was written and filmed in Italian by our team of scientists, storytellers and video makers. We are Italians. It was manually translated into English, but dubbed with artificial intelligence. Long live culture and let's go back to the video. The liquid in e-cigarettes is mostly made up of a mix of propylene glycol and essentially glycerol, also known as glycerin or vegetable glycerin. Sometimes there's also a tiny bit of water, but most of the time there isn't. And what are propylene glycol and glycerol? Well, they're organic substances that have a very similar molecular structure and are relatively non-toxic. In fact, they're used in a wide range of products, in food as an additive, in smoke machines, and in many types of cosmetics. But this doesn't mean they're harmless because, as always, it's the dose that makes the poison. So it's true that they're not overly toxic on their own, but if you breathe in a lot of this stuff, you could indeed experience some side effects. But we'll talk about the health effects later. Then, obviously, you can also add nicotine and flavors. Nicotine is a substance that I think we all know about, and it's what's addictive and has effects on your brain and health. Two different forms of nicotine may be found in the liquid, with a maximum concentration of 20 milligrams per milliliter. It might be pure nicotine, so just the nicotine molecule as it is, or a nicotine salt, like nicotine benzoate, nicotine tartrate, or even nicotine lactate. So, about these salts, they say that they actually get absorbed in your mouth faster than regular nicotine does. In the literature about this, opinions differ widely. Some claim that normal nicotine is absorbed faster, while other studies conclude the opposite. The bottom line is that it's always nicotine. The flavors, on the other hand, are obviously added for taste and come from organic substances dissolved in the liquid. For instance, to get a minty flavor, menthol is usually added. For a peachy taste, it's 2 isopropyl N, 2, 3 trimethylbutyramide, a particular molecule, or for a lemony kick, some limonene. When it comes to it, there are actually thousands and thousands of organic substances that can be added to the liquid to give it flavor, and mixing them in different combinations can create new and unique tastes. That was an overview of the chemical makeup of the liquid in vapes, so glycol, glycerol, occasionally a little water, nicotine, and flavors. Now let's look at how an e-cigarette actually works. Let's start by saying that the e-cigarette is often called a vape, so that's where we get to vape and vaping from. And it's a good thing that we have a specific verb for it, because it's not the same thing as smoking. There's actually no combustion in e-cigarettes, so there's no flame-burning organic material, and as a result, you don't get all the toxins that come with smoking. What actually happens with vaping with an e-cigarette is that a coil heats up, you take a drag, so air gets pulled in, and the liquid gets vaporized into a mist. Well, in reality, it's not exactly right to say that the liquid is vaporized, because what's being produced isn't vapor, but rather an aerosol. So that little white puff you see coming out of your mouths isn't glycol and glycerol in a gaseous state, but extremely tiny droplets in liquid form scattered in the air, basically the air we just breathed in. If you look closely at the white cloud under a microscope, you can see that it consists of tiny droplets, 100 to 600 nanometers in size. That's about a thousand times smaller than a hair's breadth, so they're tiny little droplets suspended in the air, not vapor. Then there's another term that's actually not quite right. The coil that heats the liquid and then turns it into an aerosol is often called an atomizer. From a technical standpoint, atomization is a process that breaks down a material into individual atoms. For instance, let's say we take a piece of iron and break it down into teeny tiny bits until we get right down to the individual iron atoms. Well, that's what atomization is. But this doesn't happen with vaping. We said before that individual droplets of liquid form, not single atoms. But hey, in the end it kind of works, because atomizer is used as a synonym for nebulizer or aerosolizer, which to be fair would be the more accurate term scientifically speaking. Anyway, the coil, as we've mentioned, heats up to allow the aerosol to form, and precisely how hot the coil gets ultimately depends on the amount of liquid present. 
For instance, if the tank's bone dry, you could hit temperatures of over 700 degrees Celsius. On the other hand, if there's liquid present, the temperature can stay below 200 degrees Celsius. It all depends on the resistance measured in ohms and the usage time. Basically, if you take a really long drag, the temperature can shoot way up. The hotter the coil gets, the more likely it is that the liquid, so the ethylene glycol and glycerol, will break down and form potentially harmful substances. And speaking of harmful substances, let's now look at what effects there are on human health. The fact that there's no burning, like with regular cigarettes, makes vaping less dangerous. Precisely because the typical or classic substances found in smoke are not produced. But watch out! This doesn't mean that they're 100% harmless. In fact, an in-depth analysis of the aerosol droplets that form when you vape reveals, for instance, the presence of nickel and chromium. This is because the heating coil, the part that gets hot, is often made of nickel chromium, which is an alloy made up of nickel and chromium. But now the real question we've got to ask is how much nickel and how much chromium are in those droplets? And how much of it are we actually breathing in? The answer is, it depends. It all depends on how much you vape, the temperature the coil heats up to, and what the coil is made of. Basically, there are a whole lot of factors at play. So if we want concrete information on the potential damage caused by these metals, more time and some big in-depth studies are needed. In addition to these metals, other substances may form. At high temperatures, glycol and glycerol break down forming substances like formaldehyde and acetaldehyde, two cancer-causing agents. But, also in this case, it really all depends on how hot it gets. If the tank's almost empty, temperatures can get higher, and so more metals will be present, and more cancer-causing substances will form. But if the tank's full, the temperature's lower, so there's less chance of that. As for the flavors, the issue is actually pretty complicated because there are so many molecules responsible for the various tastes and, as AIRC, the Italian Foundation for Cancer Research, says, they should be looked at one by one in detail to figure out their potential toxicity for the lungs or other parts of the body. So, as you can see, figuring out in advance what the long-term effects are going to be isn't an easy task. But the short-term effects have already been clearly demonstrated. These include irritated airways, excessive mucus production, coughing, trouble breathing, chest pain, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, tiredness, fever, and weight loss. Not to mention all the side effects of nicotine, which, let's not forget, besides being super addictive, can lead to high blood pressure, diabetes, and in young people, it can also interfere with neurological development, so it can affect brain development. So vaping certainly isn't harmless, and future studies will undoubtedly provide us with more information on its side effects, but vapes are definitely less harmful than traditional cigarettes. Guys, thanks so much for watching this video, which by the way was just the first of several. We'll definitely make another one about heated tobacco products and one on traditional cigarettes too. Share this video with anyone who vapes. See you again soon here on Geopop Everyday Science. A la prossima.